All right, so this is the first segment in a new series that we're gonna be doing where we're pretty much just gonna be going around to different shops that we have interest in. Either they're our friend shop or they're a shop that uh, we're just really stoked on what they're doing. So this one today uh, is our good friend, Adam. Uh, now I've known Adam for probably about 10 years and he is a machinist, fabricator, car builder, and he does crazy, crazy work. And pretty much, if you can dream it, he can make it. And and so we're gonna be looking at his shop, it's called AMT Machine. Uh, we'll do a kind of shop tour, we're gonna to take a look at what he has going on right now in the shop uh, and give you a little bit of an insight into kind of uh, his backstory and, and exactly what he does. So I'm super excited, I love checking out other people's shops, I'm kind of a nerd for that. So uh, if you guys are interested, and I think you will be, uh, we'll check it out. So here it is, AMT Machine. Alright, so we're here at AMT. This is Adam's shop. This is Adam. Hello. Uh, right now, we're just going to be looking over some of the projects he's got going on right now, and then we'll kind of go through his shop. Uh, he's got a ton of really cool stuff that I'm really curious about and I want to find out. Um, first off, because it's a mini channel, we got to look at this mini. So we're doing... This is a 61? 61 Mark I Morris Mini. Morris. And you're yeah. saying it's original Canadian? Or car. Canadian car. Wow. The cool thing about this one is getting a B18 Honda engine swap, which is pretty crazy for a Mark One, especially they're getting kind of expensive now. Yeah, so, yeah. I believe he said he bought the car for 500 bucks. Oh my god! And it's been sitting in a body shop in, I think it was Kelowna for the last six years. Yikes! Yeah. Wow. And then finally, just I guess he came into some he, money and he, wanted he, it. He's, he's or just like, enough, it's just, enough. It's, yeah. yeah, it's just time to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. It's got coilover set up in the rear. It's got the full like yes. mini tech kit. So mini tech uh, subframes front and back and Spax coilovers front and back. Sweet. Starting, starting on the to, interior, uh, yeah. sound deadening. Uh, then starting on the carpet, putting in the pedals, and I'm probably going to start running the wiring soon, just so it's. Are you doing Lucas away. wiring? I'm doing my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do Lucas. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna make the loom yourself? Yeah. Full loom. Full loom. Wow. Yeah. The engine harness will be the mini tech harness. Yeah. But the, rye wire the chassis harness will be mine. Wow. Yeah. He and then I guess you're not doing the Lucas uh, like style of everything run through the switches. Like you're gonna have actual fuses. I'm gonna have fuses <laughs> and I'm gonna have relays. <laughs> proper switches for everything and relays, for sure relays. Wow. Yeah. And I guess well, on a car like this it's pretty simple, right? It's pretty much just lights. It, it's some it's gauges. So basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're doing I saw you got like the um, the indicator switch. Indicator is that... switch is the standard mini Mark I indicator switch on the stock. Um, it had a broken end on it, so I machined a nice little aluminum piece for for the end. But oh, so just the, the, the top there, the little, the yeah. end pieces? Yeah. So the front is all original metal welded together with these crazy hinges. Pneumatics. Yeah. And then this is the, this is an older Older Minitech. Mini -tech. Subframe kit. series, yeah. yeah. And when the guy had the car, a lot of the stuff was junk. So pretty much the entire components for this car were thrown away, so everything's being bought new. Got a brand new steering rack. Uh, the pedal box I refreshed, because the metal on that was fine, but new brakes. Like, we're going with the discs for sure on the front. Yeah, you need it. Um, Things like the upper mounts here, I had to slightly modify due to the hinge. So it's got a little notch cut out of it for clearance for the hinge. Oh, okay. And then the lower mount, I also had to fabricate to work with this setup. Sweet. And then the other project you got going on right now, which we got to check out, is this thing, which is insane. So 1975 280Z. So what's, what's, what's the setup? What's going on in here? All right, so this is a twin turbo RB26 Skyline motor. We're 
currently going to run it with the twin turbo setup. The motor will be coming back out and is getting fully built to handle 550-ish horse. Um, and we're running the 240SX subframes front and rear, which was a job and a half to get that in there. <laughs> and lined up and squared and everything, but it worked out. So you built this full tube frame? The full tube frame is all, yeah, I built that all in-house, it's all custom. Basically the, I just chopped the body off from here forward. Um, he still wants to run the flip up hood. He doesn't want it to be removable. So I retained these pieces of the original inner fenders. Uh -huh. um, and then I guess you had to get got the that lined up properly. I had to get that all lined up before exactly. you could build the tube frame, kind of like to... Yeah. So a little bit of lasers, some math, some levels, yeah. and <laughs> bending. Bob's your uncle and you got a tube uncle. frame. And then let's take a look at the rear, because you can see, so you cut out the whole back. So yes, the back has been removed. So we can bolt in a uh, fuel cell, and then a lot of the bracketry welded in for mounting the 240SX rear subframe. And we've got a titanium uh, Tomei exhaust which is for a skyline and actually fit. Oh, like out, just like out the box. It just fit. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to shorten one little section, but it, Other than it just bolted right up. Bolted right up. That's crazy. Yeah. What's this going to be intended for? Is it a drift car? Is it a rally car? Track, or? track days, and he will be driving it on the street. Wow, it's going to be some yeah. Some street, is he gonna have full interior? You know what? He's going all out. He's got. We're doing full interior. He's got um, power windows, power locks. He's oh, so it's a street a, car. Yeah, yeah, he's got a uh, like an RFID card reader ignition system thing. Really? Right yeah. Oh, yeah. crazy! So you just tap your card and then you can. Start Are you doing car. the wiring for that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> this, this one is not going to be like the mini. No, this no. One is going to take. A long time to wire up. Yeah, because most people find wiring like daunting. The super daunting thing. I right? don't mind it. I've done it enough times now that I'm not too scared of it. Yeah, you realize it's not quite as crazy as it's, it's not. just one step at a time. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. You just, you just, just yeah. I always think of it too as like plumbing. Yes. Like it's pretty much all 12 volts yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And if there's no crazy like draw or short or something, yeah. it's gonna be 12 volts everywhere roughly. Yeah. Just. It's like plumbing, just like yeah. a tube. Just connect the tubes. Just make sure the grounds are good. Yeah. And when you're running the wires, make sure you run all the wires you need, because you don't want to add a wire. Yeah, when yeah. Because then you got a harness, up, and you then don't want to add a wire to it. <laughs> Better to have like additional wires. Than, Better to have like a couple or loom of right at the end, like. Well, that depends if you're I get tucking it under the carpet or. Yeah, or that's true. It. That's true. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, this is dope. Let's check out the rest of the shop. Yeah. Because, okay, so you're, you have kind of a funny job because there's not many people that do what you do where you're a mechanic, you're also a machinist, yeah. fabricator, yeah. and you can do wiring, you can do plumbing, you can do, like, if someone wants a car built, like, well, with the, so you just finished a 1945 Five. Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce slash Bentley? What? Slash Bentley. Well, it originally was a Bentley frame. And then when the car finally got to me, he supplied a Rolls Royce for him. Oh. <laughs> which is what kind of threw me off a bit there. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's a Rolls Royce. Okay. So maybe we'll cut to some footage of the Bentley. Experience, guys. What was it like? Well, this burger's amazing. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. The, the, the funny thing about this car was the original owner, it, it was a two-door coupe. The original owner wanted it repainted. We took it to a body shop. They threw their apprentice on it. 
Okay. The apprentice used coarse sandpaper on a grinder on an <laughs> aluminum body and utterly destroyed the body. So no matter what, the body wasn't salvageable. It got tossed away. The frame and all the components were still there. And so then the owner's like, well, I'm gonna turn this into a special. He did some of the work already on the frame. He relocated the motor. Uh, he had shortened the frame in sections. Um, and then when I got it, it was just a matter of piecing the puzzle back together, making new bulkheads and whatnot. He would never... Uh... <laughs> That's that is a hilarious tiny small door. door too. <laughs> That's the dwarf door. Yeah. That's where the dwarves live at the That's bike shop. That's where the dwarves live at the bike shop. That's right. Like, no, yeah, no, yeah. Not, now. Nope. not right now. I'm just, <laughs> I gotta keep that in. That's great. <laughs> yeah, like back in your hall. <laughs> people don't know that you share the shop, dude. So it's like you yeah, have this yeah. weird tiny we, door we, with we people. We got a motorcycle shop next door. They do uh, service and repair work. Which is kind of cool because I get a little bit of the work too, uh, doing the customizing on some of these motorbikes. Yeah, you're making some sweet bikes too. Yeah, that's pretty okay, funny. so customizing. So okay, so yeah, your machinist fabricator. Pretty much, if you want something built, you can build yeah. Yeah. anything. I've, I've done signage for buildings, awnings, and yeah. staircase handrails. From that to his. Yeah. Yeah, we'll check out at one point. He's got a. It's the ZX Mini, you might have seen it before, so it's got rear mounted ZX 10R motorcycle yeah. engine powering the rear wheels, all custom fabricated, all made in the house here, uh, one off, not a kit or anything, but we'll check that out. We're going to do a special video on that because it deserves its own, <laughs> it deserves its own praise, Yeah. but let's go check out the shop. So. You have got pretty much every machining tool you can have. I've got everything that I need. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's stuff that I like. Yeah, yeah. But it's all cost, right? Yeah. Well, this, so, this stuff is super this stuff expensive is good. and it's it, like... Yeah. And it, I've had this stuff for 20 years and it's it, it was used probably a good 30 years before I got really? it. Really? Yeah, man, that's like, they don't make things like they used to. No, exactly, yeah. Well, and these machines are crazy. So you got, this is a milling mill? machine? Yeah, so it's all, all my tools are hand operated, no CNC, none of that stuff, so. It takes a garbage. little bit longer, but I can be more precise and make yeah. what I want, right? Yeah. And there's mostly one-offs anyway, so I don't really need CNC. Yeah, you're not gonna be like mass producing things. Exactly. You got your milling machine. Got my milling machine. Giant lathe. Giant lathe, which I use for doing wheels and stuff. If I get someone that comes in with a set of wheels and they, they, they're putting on, on a car that they weren't for and they need the hub bore bored out, I can just throw them on there and I can bore out the hubs. Yeah, because you got that giant chuck. Giant like a chuck. You actually put the wheel over top of that? Like? Uh, yeah, those, those, the chucks will come out a little bit further. I can mount uh, 19 on the Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How much do you think this weighs? Um, the forklift that brought it in was lifting its back wheels off the ground. <laughs> so, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> and then you got this the, the itty bitty baby lathe. Well, that's the one that gets used the most. Yeah. Um, just for all the small things. So it's it's perfect for. Yeah. Perfect for what I do. This is the, the bread and butter machine. Bread and butter machine, that's yeah. right. Adam Savage actually had a part in his, he was talking about his lathe and he was saying the lathe is amazing because it's one of the only machines that can make itself. Like right. You could make a lathe with a lathe, yes, like, you but could. you can't like you do that with anything else. So. Yeah, exactly. So you've got kind of like mobile stations a little bit. I see like, so you got some giant. I just kind of, I like to, Base it out so I have my machining center. Yeah. You know, I got my hoist, my hoist there, and then I've got my fabrication center over there where I can do all my welding. Yeah. Well, let's check that out. So you got all your all my tools. tools. So I like to keep everything against the wall so it's not cluttering the yeah. space. You got tubing yeah. bender. Tubing bender. Yeah. Manual. Yeah. Manual tubing. I'm bender. noticing a. A theme? A trend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't like, uh, you like doing stuff yourself? Yeah, totally. And you're famous for being really bad when it comes to PPE, protective equipment. 
No gloves. <laughs> oh no, I, 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 it, it, it's the goggles. <laughs> the goggles. They drive me nuts. So you do the safety um, squint? The <laughs> how many times, yeah. let's be honest, how many times have you got metal in your eye? Um, three that I've had to go and get it plucked out. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I learned a lesson by now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, what yeah. happened? The worst one, it was literally a sliver. Um, not quite from a wire wheel, but similar type of thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just got to the to the eye doctor, and they put this numbing agent in there, and they they they're like looking in my eye, and they're like, "Oh, you got a nice little rust ring." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. <laughs> just get the thing out of my eye." <laughs> so they plucked it out, and they give you eye drops, and then it's fine. <laughs> It takes, uh, takes a while. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Oh, I love yeah. having rusty yeah. metal in yeah. my eyeball. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, always my, put, I, I, I always wear my protection when I'm welding. Well, I always yeah. have that on. You'd be blind by now with the amount of welding you do. Yeah. Speaking of welders, you've got... I've got a little wire feed that I like to use for like body work because it, it's low power, doesn't yeah, really do much warpage. Uh, Got the Miller TIG, which is awesome for everything. And then I got that massive wire feed, which is Jeez. super industrial. And how many of these do you go through? <laughs> I used to go through a lot more. Really? Um, I probably do a tank every couple months, and then that rule might last me six months. Wow. That's still a lot um, of welding. But, geez. but when I was doing more of the store fixtures and that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff, I can pass through one of those in a week. Wow. And then you got oxyacetylene cutting torch? Oxyacetylene and then my vintage compressor. I was going to say, look at this. At riveted tank. Riveted tank. Yeah. And that, that motor on top is that hilarious. Yeah, this that, is... it's all original. That's the original motor that came with that tank. That's crazy. And yeah, that's... So it's 220? 220, yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, I don't know how many no years idea how old it is, but it's definitely... You can old. see it's so cool because it the steel, it's not butted. No. It like, literally goes around it's and then it's over wrapped yeah. around yeah. and then riveted. Yeah. It's amazing it doesn't leak. I know. How is it? So it's not even welded. It's just riveted. Yeah. I'm sure there's some form of sealer in there. Yeah, yeah. It'd have to be. That's super cool. Yeah. So then this is your like assembly station or like so, fabrication. Yeah. Kind of so when I'm bending the tubes, I pull that over here and I bolt it down to the floor, and then I just move it out of the way when I'm not using it. Oh, okay. My motorbike stand for doing the bikes is currently stored for mini parts. Um, nice big table that I can move around, heavy duty, and I got a nice big heavy plate so I can do just square stuff up on it. And whatnot. Yeah, yeah. A Y wheel grinder. This one I leave here, and then I've got the other grinder over there, which I use for sharpening the tools. Oh, okay. So, different type of stone for different materials. Oh, okay. And then, some things you have to make yourself. So, I have to make a square die for bending one inch square tubing for when I did the doors on the Rolls Royce. Wow. So, yeah. That's super cool. So, this, what is this made out of? Aluminum. So you machine this out of billet? Machine that out of a big chunk of aluminum, yeah. Wow. And I have to weld this part on. Yeah. And then let's go. This is the other part that holds the material in again. Oh, okay, so. and then it sh yeah, rotates exactly. exactly. like that. Exactly. Must be nice to be able to just like need a tool and just make it. Yeah, well the material was like, cheaper than buying a die, so. Oh yeah, yeah, dies like that must be super expensive, yeah. right? Yeah, and then you keep a lot of the material kind of here. Just, I've <laughs> seen you have had way more before in the well, past. Well, this, this is all the small chunks, the small cutouts. The longer pieces are up on the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Up and out of the way. Yeah. And then just storage racks for wiring stuff, um, suspension brake parts, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. What about, um, what are those like, like, um, dimple uh, die? Dimple die, yeah. Yeah, I got those. You got those? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I. Picked a setup not too long ago, so I did some of that on my mini. Oh, so just like 
Nice little dice. I so really want to dimple die the I know out. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I yeah. doing that with mine. Yeah. So these didn't have a hole in them before. These were just designed to work on my, my press. And I'm like, the, my, my press puts way too much pressure on these and it kind of ruins the metal. Ah. So I drilled a hole through them and then I can just bolt it together. And squish the metal into shape. Oh, okay. And it works. So, so you just drill. You just drill like a. You hole saw a little hole, and then you just pop that in, and then you pop that. And on you top. put the bolt through and just crank it, it down. Crank it down. Exactly. I think I have a little. My original panel that I'm not using because I didn't. I used. I did this one on the press. So. Oh, cool. On the press. Oh, you get the yeah. Little ridge, right? And then if you do it without the press, it comes out perfect. Nice, nice and clean. Yeah. That's so aluminum? That's aluminum. Yeah. Relatively I guess, does thick. this work with steel too? Yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. No problem. Oh, that looks so sick. So, yeah, that was I want to do that on my... That was my test panel just to make sure yeah. I was doing stuff right. What's your next uh, tool setup? What would, make your, what would make your life like way easier? Plasma cutter. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't have a plasma cutter. They're not even that expensive. Yeah. Do you use the oxy? No, I Just grinders, death wheels. For aluminum, I use my bandsaw and then death wheels. Yeah, I yeah. go through a lot of them, so a plasma would be nice. Yeah, yeah. What's your What's the best blade that doesn't explode? I think it's called Brico. Yeah. I'm so curious with like your your tool choices and like the little oh it's like, Makita little sorry. Makita ones yeah yeah I've I you get these in like the ten pack yeah. and they're relatively cheap and they last quite a long time okay and then all my sanding discs I go through a lot <laughs> <laughs> I keep them though because when they're worn out it's it's they're smoother good. yeah so yeah. you get a smoother finish yeah. Instead of just jumping right in. No, I've got like some super old ones too. Yeah. They're, they're nice. Yeah. And you can, you can almost, it turns into like a polishing wheel exactly. by the end. Yeah, exactly. So they're worth holding on to. And then brake, uh, brake pipe tooling. So yeah, all can, flaring stuff. Yeah. Flare it all out. Yeah. Hmm. I love the look of like where. Like, yeah. How long did it take this metal? To look to like to this, point. where it's got these little holes everywhere, oh, like, know, you know, I know, this is like a place of industry, like, you can tell you actually do shit, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> there's like, stuff everywhere, there's stuff everywhere, yeah, but in a, like a, a really, like, awesome way, like, it's just like, Later. for tool nerds like me, it's like, yeah, eye candy, right, yeah, yeah. that's really cool, and then my, one of my newer tools that I just got, which is kind of ironic because I do a lot of roll cables. Yeah. So I used to just do my notching on my milling machine. But I picked up a Oh, an actual An actual notcher. notcher and yeah, that's way better than using my notch machine. Saves a ton of time. Does a great job. So what are some keys to making a roll bar, roll cage? Because I know it's like a lot of people will pick up a tubing bender and try to do it themselves. You've built a ton of cages. Yeah, um, what I always end up doing, because that's a manual machine, so I'll always have a scrap piece on hand. And that way I know if I'm clamping that here and I know my mark, I know what my bend distance is. Okay, so you'll, when you'll make a sample bend. Yeah, to, and then I the can radius. measure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way when I'm doing like, uh, in, in the car, when you're measuring from A or B pillar to B pillar or whatever, Yeah. you know that, okay, so my straight length is has to be this. Yeah. And I'll know where to stop my bend, so it's always uh, okay. Okay. tight to the body. You don't and want I guess you have it, do you have it marked on your tubing bender as well, like where the bend? This is basically my mark, like I know that's where my bend starts, so whatever my length of the straight is, I know that's how far my Oh, okay, goes. cool, cool. Yeah. So that's the key, is just to like get a sample just, of this. Just, just waste a little it. bit of material and have a sample. And piece. then you know exactly. And then, and then from then on, you're always knowing like yeah. how, much gonna, how much it's gonna, how much it's gonna bend, yeah. What about other like machining like tips? Like, to, like basic fabrication stuff? What's, what like, what are some lessons you learned the hard way that you could tell someone? <laughs> oh god, I don't know. Use um, new sandpaper? 
don't uh, don't uh, drill through stainless at a high speed because <laughs> you will melt your bit and you harden the stainless and then you'll never get through it. Oh, uh, okay. So low speed cutting oil or cutting fluid. You kind of and oomph, make sure like your pressure, drill like, is sharp. Yeah, and you should just be able to. Yeah, let the tool do the work. Let the tool do the work. I've burned through enough. Uh, reciprocating saw blades, pushing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. To know, and then all of a sudden, I like. I remember once I was trying to cut and cut and cut and it wouldn't cut, and then I kind of was taking a break but letting it go, and it yeah. and it, and it, it went like through, powder. and I'm like, yeah. oh, that's the key. Like yeah. almost no pressure. Yeah. Like exactly. you always hear like, let the tool do the work, but it's like it's true. Like yeah. you know, second you like on something and then it's catching and the blades all bend yeah and yeah same thing with the the death wheel with the grinder too yeah yeah just being, let it just let it move yeah and when you don't turn it <laughs> when you're using a death wheel on aluminum cutting wax cutting wax yeah otherwise the the edge of the blade gets gummed up with the aluminum and it'll stop cutting but you put wax on it oh huh, okay right so through. it's a specific Wax, like it's just cutting wax. Cutting yeah. wax, okay. Yeah. It's a machinist thing. Yeah. Hmm. You can use soap as well. I have like a yeah. bar of soap that I yeah. keep, like, yeah. like yeah. touch the edge, especially with like like big drill bits too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that one works. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sweet. Well, yeah. you were telling me another one too before. Um, oh, when you're cutting radiuses with yeah. a death wheel. Mm -hmm. Put it on an angle, and then you can just yeah. you can get a nice just in the way that if you're like rolling a hula hoop sideways, yeah, exactly. it'll go in a circle. Exactly. Yeah, so you just yeah. you just and then yeah. you can get a nice clean. Yeah. Because otherwise, like I know I've had like grinder discs explode on me. Oh, yeah. Trying to make yeah. a slight turn. Exactly. Pah! Yeah. And then yeah, dangerous. It's scary. So yeah. Always do it on an angle, and you'll have to do multiple passes, but yeah, end result. But you can. Perfect. It's amazing what you can make with a. Grinder and a welder, oh, and that's it. Thing. Yeah, like all these other tools are pretty much more precise or faster. Yeah, but you can build almost anything with a welder and a and a grinder. And a grinder. Yeah. You can cut, yeah. you can sand, you can do anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's sweet. And here's another tip for machines um, regarding brass. When you're drilling brass and you got a sharp drill bit, it'll actually suck the drill bit in. Oh, and it can actually like snap the bit and you'll get fragments all over the place and you don't want to get fragments of drill bit in your face. Yeah. So what you do is you dull the cutting edge of the drill bit. Just that, that just sharp the, just the, the point. tip of it, yeah. Not the tip, but the, the actual flute, right? Okay. So you just put it on the grinder and you just dull it just a little bit and it'll drill right through, it'll never catch. Ah. Yeah. That reminds me of the story you were telling me with... <laughs> the plastic? The plastic oh. when you're in... Yeah, um, plastic is similar to brass, but a lot worse. Yeah. That'll suck a drill bit in like you wouldn't believe. And when it rips a six inch diameter chunk of plastic out of the lathe and throws it at your face, <laughs> you go to the hospital and get emergency teeth repair. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. And that was in school too, right? That was. Or no, that was your apprentice. That was at my job as an apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giant chunk that, of That rotating. was my first day back to the job after the school session. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All right. Well, that's a little tour of Adam's shop. Uh, for me personally, it's like awesome to come here. I like always love coming here. The projects are super neat. Every time we come here, there's something different going on. So it's a big shout out to Adam. Thanks. If you want to check him stuff out, uh, AMT Machine and Fab is his uh, is his company name. Um, and uh, what's your Instagram? Instagram is Adam Turbo One. Uh, website is amtmachineshop.com. And yeah. Yeah, and we're gonna be doing uh, a video on his ZX Mini that I talked about earlier. Hashtag ZX Mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll probably also do a video on this on his B18 build because um, it's super sick, and um, everyone I know would be really interested in seeing it. So thanks again, and uh, can't wait to do the other ones. Awesome.
just to give you an idea that Adam can't leave well enough alone with anything, even his daily driver, just like a basic new car. He's like custom made Willwood six piston brakes to fit on his family car just because, which is hilarious. But that's so Adam.